Before we get started, I think it's important to note, this video is not solely a review of the girls' comeback. It's a musical analysis of Espa's place in pop. Focusing only on was girls good or bad means missing the point of the video. Over the past three years, I've seen a lot of dissenting opinions on experimental music. Some say it's an excuse for companies to release trashy music. Some people think it's the only thing keeping K-pop from sinking into the dregs. To me, experimental music is at its best when the experiment isn't just about one song sounding different. For me, the best experiments invite the listener to enjoy music itself in atypical ways. And this is a hypothesis I see proven in ESPA more than any other K-pop group. ESPA has done a frankly phenomenal job of branding themselves musically. You can listen to an ESPA song from beginning to end, looking for typical structures and melodies, and still enjoy a great many of their tracks. These metallic, synthetic anthems have a lot to offer as regular K-pop singles. But like a well-written video game, these songs have options, pathways of enjoyment that you can choose to explore. They open up the idea that music can be listened to and perceived in more than one way. Compare Black Mamba to Next Level. In my opinion, Black Mamba is Espa's most commercial single, with the textbook Club Drop and EDM surround sound. The verses, pre-chorus, chorus, and bridge are all easily identifiable, building to a natural climax. A fast runner, the pace of this song slants towards the chorus. Usually this makes a song feel one note, but what's fascinating about Black Mamba is the way the verses retain their definition and punch, even when they're given less than 10 seconds of focus. This is all thanks to each section having its own melody, brought together by the ever-evolving percussion. Black Mamba shows off the vocals. These girls can sing, but it is a dance song at the end of the day. And it's pretty close to the girl crush skeleton that we know and some of us love. I think it's a very strong springboard for where Espa goes from here. Giving us a taste of something we recognize sweetens the pot when looking to the next song. Espa's music is about to get less traditionally accessible, but it achieves something completely unique to the group. If you take Black Mamba's traditional sequential build and melt it down, with the densest layers sinking to the bottom and the lightest rising to the top, you get Next Level. If Black Mamba is like a roller coaster, the next level is like a bullet train. There is no big crescendo chorus surrounded by lower level verses and a building pre-chorus. Next level isn't about a huge centerpiece, but rather the ride and flow of layers underneath a relatively same same song. Next Level's main song is a lot like Soup. The true enjoyment comes from spooning out the individual layers and flavors in each measure. Next Level builds progression with a series of natural transitions, but this song challenges the way we listen to music by stepping outside conventional buildups and breakdowns. And that's before anyone said anything about novice calling. Next Level's main refrain acts more like a verse than a chorus, bracketing the more individualized moments like train cars with individual cargo. By playing with the layers and production in the verses and chants, and sliding transitions half in and half out of lines, Next Level has a totally different propulsion than Black Mamba. Espa has provided the control group and now presents an experiment. This is going to sound weird, but go with me here. Where a song like Black Mamba is usually enjoyed along the x-axis, Next Level is enjoyed along the y-axis. The excitement happens when you dig down. When people say a song is a grower, it usually means that it takes some time to get used to the song's oddities before appreciating its whole. But with Next Level, Espa takes this a little further. The trick here is that repeated listens help you unravel all the layers that are present from moment to moment, and hear how a few key changes here and there delineate the flow of the song. Suddenly, this techno warp EDM track switches into a smooth, jazzy shoulder bop, complete with its own breakdowns and riffs. Now, let's be clear about this. Back when Next Level came out, people were pretty polarized by it, but I saw a lot of defenders attempting to artify Next Level by saying that it had the same structure as Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, you heard me right. This is hilarious, for a lot of reasons. Bohemian Rhapsody is a six-minute musical rhapsody built on five distinct passages in a three-act structure. These sections are built on musical transitions that lead each idea to a natural conclusion or evolution, including operatic and symphonic. Each section has a musical reason to follow the specific section before it, and it ends in a musical bookend. Espa's next level could be generously called a cut-and-paste structure. Meaning if you could somehow print out Next Level, you could take scissors and cut the two songs apart, reassemble the original song, and have the other part in your other hand. This is a two-act structure, or even more accurately, a one-act play with a jarring intermission. And yeah, you, you can tell that that comparison has been bothering me for over a year now, but it's out now, I've said it, I'm done. SM made a deliberately polarizing song, as they are wont to do, and it polarized people, as it was designed to do. 
And I know it sounds like I'm spewing bullshit to justify why I like this odd song, but I'm, I'm not kidding. This is what I like in experimental music, a song that introduces a new way to enjoy music, a song where the chorus, which is normally the centerpiece, is actually the bass line, linking all the unique sections together. And you get to dig down into each one and hear how the song has introduced a new groove or emotion through its production. It's not an impossible puzzle box, but it's a different way to enjoy music. So now we've got our x-axis and our y-axis. There's only one thing missing. Oh my gosh, don't you know I'm a savage? I talked extensively about Savage in my top of 2021 video, but I'll go over why I think this song is so well executed. Savage is where the music becomes three-dimensional. As Savage moves from stanza to stanza, it feels like the listener is taking passageways through the song as we walk to the core of the machine. Savage is built on a scale of pressurized sound, sometimes bouncing and slapping against the metal walls of the beat, sometimes humming in containment as the vocals give rise to the chorus. This series of pressurized, depressurized creates rooms within the song, entirely unique sequences that fit together because the song is running too hot to stay in solid form. Where Black Mamba was the x-axis and next level was the y-axis, Savage introduces the z-axis, bringing the listener into a spatially moving song where you can feel the doorways of each segment passing over your head as you move from moment to moment. Where Next Level wanted you to dig down into the layers, Savage wants you to be aware of everything above, below, and around you. Savage is built like a Battlestar spaceship. You can just imagine sliding chrome doors as you make your way from the flight deck to the control room. This song has architecture, and energy flows through every structure in this song. Contained metallic hallways open into vast glowing atriums and vaulting hydraulics, tracing its power all the way to the core, where it sends energy and electricity to the extremities of the song. This chorus is buzzing with movement, whirring with kinetic energy that sends robotic arms and conveyor belts into motion. You can lean out the window as the song is moving and let your hand trail down every rung that makes up the skeleton of the song. And before you call me overwritten, Ning Ning said in an interview that she imagined story scenes in her head while recording the song. Espa's music is meant to be a fantasy experience that evokes imagery and textures. So that's how you build an Espa single. You take a song and melt it down and build a spaceship out of it. Do I really want to release this video? Whatever. The Savage album is built on this idea of pressurize, depressurize. Weightless songs like Lucid Dream are caught outside the spaceship, tense potential energy is bunched into every muscle of I'll Make You Cry, and firecracker celebrations like Yepi Yepi explode with enjoyment. Energy feels entirely composed of pressure, and Iconic releases bursts of power while flirting up and down a staircase of notes. Savage was easily one of my top albums of its year. But after Savage, I wasn't sure where Espa would go next. We've come to the 3D stage of the experiment. We've got our battle star ready for space flight. So what's the next directive? Fighting villains. In space. Duh. The mini-album Girls takes the fantasy influence in their photo shoots and concept and pushes it more directly into the music. Girls is a prowling battle song built on rapid change-ups and war horns. Singing becomes chanting becomes singing, members trade lines like playable characters in a selection lineup, verses and beat switches blow by like fast changing your weapon in game combat. While not as ambitious or sonically unusual as Savage, Girls is a hydra of genres. Fiery bursts of dirty guitar soar into symphonic vocal pre-choruses, and the chorus itself is a power pop anthem, heralding action and triumph. The fun of Girls is in the constant swerves and patterned exchanges of instrumentals and vocal delivery. I swear to God, I thought she said Donald Trump. Excitingly, Girls features a dramatic synth breakdown with flavors of dubstep and techno, and it is fucking sick. The climax of Girls reminds me of power pop and alt rock of the 2000s. Women girls, women girls, women girls. You can definitely feel the science fiction elements in the soundscape of Illusion. This song burns on low buzzing bass, seductive chanting, and a galactic lightboard of synths and alarms. 
After the opening siren, the song's pulse is a single high warning note on top of earthy vibrations. This vocal performance is teasing and lilting, tempting the listener closer before snapping into energetic breakdowns. This has a hunting sound to it. The energy of Illusion is its most distinct aspect. After the empty, gaseous space station in Savage, Illusion is reminiscent of science fiction puzzle games like Portal, a series of obstacles that domino to an iced out chorus. Each verse feels like a new level, unraveling a slow burning mystery in total darkness with no companions but an emergency siren. No longer an observer, Illusion asks the listener to become a player, and the song prowls with untapped dangers. Illusion has the unique effect of making the listener feel active in the space of the song. Illusion is by far my favorite song off the album, and perhaps my favorite Espa track. The rest of the mini-album features sweeter songs. Life's Too Short invokes classic girl pop moxie in a hopeful expression of honesty and self-assurance. I See You is a guitar and piano ballad with themes of empathy and consolidation. It reminds me of Khan's I'm Your Girl. Lingo is a country hybrid? Yee-huh? The up and down verses feel very red velvet to me, but I mean, it's, it's different. I kind of like it. I don't know. If I were to describe Espa's music in a few words, I would say acidic, energetic, and optic. Let's get it out here before I continue. As musicians, Espa owes me nothing. The only thing they owe anyone is music worth the price they put on their albums. Okay, great. Awesome. Now on to my thought. Espa has the chance to do something super specific and so unique in K-pop. When I first started listening to Espa, I was reminded of Gorillaz and other British counter artists from the 90s and 2000s. Gorillaz is also a virtual band, and their music is one of the best examples of a truly hybrid genre discography. I think the one that most people know is the sound switch in Feel Good Inc., but I want to show you guys my favorite Gorillaz song. This song is Dare, and it's off the album Demon Days. This is an awesome melted structure, and you can hear the different influences coming together and pulling apart. This song is so cool. And I think Aspa has the chance to do, in their sphere, what Gorillaz was able to do so well and so uniquely. But I would love for Aspa to continue exploring their hypothesis and find ways to bring this synthetic hybrid music into flesh and blood. I love what Aspa's music means for the future of K-pop. By treating the typical drop structure as the flattest dimension of music, they reverse engineered a unique musical thesis that has fully achieved liftoff. Espa's music exists on a strange z-axis, where you get new enjoyment because you change the way you approach music. I've talked a lot about formula on this channel, and one of the reasons too much formula can be frustrating for me personally is that it tends to make you listen to music the same way. You expect the same hills and the same troughs. You expect the same amount or level or sequence of production. I feel like the part of my brain that loves music isn't getting to stretch or exercise or explore, but listening to Espa is like going on a run after being stuck inside all winter. You know how every now and again you'll see a movie that makes you just think, holy shit, this is an entirely different way to do the art form? Espa's music is fiddling with that exact idea. Music is not just enjoyable in one straight way, and Espa is awesome not because of their musical jump scares, or their chant singing, or their weird robot sound effects, but because they put out a series of really intriguing songs on the simple premise, what if there's more to it? What if there's a different way to push the art form?